In this, the second part of our orientation to Genogram Maker Millennium, we will use some of the commands seen in Part 1 to create a simple genogram, similar to the three-generational genogram seen in the one-minute genogram demo. We will use the New button to create a new genogram. It is good practice to name and save your new genogram document when it is first created. We will name this document Demo. With Genogram Maker Millennium, you don't have to struggle with the cumbersome process of drawing a genogram. Rather, the software automatically creates a well-proportioned, properly formatted genogram in response to specific mouse commands. We will use the common generic terminology of left-click, right-click, depress, drag, and release. The actions generating these behaviors may vary depending on the type of computer you are using. For example, this video has been created using a MacBook Pro with a mouse pad and no physical left or right click buttons. An actual mouse is not necessary to use Genogram Maker Millennium. Now let's begin creating a simple genogram. Remember, a figure represents a person in the genogram. To create a figure, select the Figure button from the tool pad. Then place the cursor in a blank area of the workspace. Depress and hold down the left click button. Be sure not to release or click the left click button. While holding down the left click button, slide the cursor to the location where you would like a figure to appear. Note that sliding the cursor to the left will generate a square figure representing a male, while sliding the figure to the right will generate a circle figure representing a female. We want to create a male, so we will slide our cursor slightly to the left and release the left click button. It is important to note that the depressed position of the left click button was maintained throughout the operation until the desired location and appearance of the figure was present. Only then was the left click button released, generating the desired figure. With the recently created figure highlighted, an extensive property pad has appeared at the left center of the screen. The buttons in this property pad can be used to modify and refine the highlighted figure. Scroll up or down to access the full selection of the buttons on the property pad. The index button is selected to designate the figure as the index person in the genogram. To create a partnership, the figure button should remain selected in your toolpad. With the figure button selected, place the cursor in a blank area of the workspace below the existing figure. Depress and hold down the left click button. As with the initial figure creation, be sure not to release or click the left click button. While holding down the left click button, slide the cursor up toward the bottom of the existing figure. Just before the cursor reaches the lower edge of the existing figure, the partnership line in the second figure will appear. The orientation of the second figure to the first and the gender can be determined by the direction in which the cursor is slid prior to release. Slide to the right and move the orientation to the right, create a circle representing a female. Slightly to the left, changes the circle to a square. Aggressively to the left, moves the orientation and shows a square. Move aggressively to the right and show a circle figure for a female release. If the orientation of the partnership line is not as desired, it can easily be adjusted by clicking the new figure and dragging the figure to the desired location before releasing the left click button. Click on the circle figure representing the female and we drag and release. If the gender is not as required, then click on the new figure to highlight it and then select the desired gender from the property pad. We can change the square to a circle representing a female. We want the gender to be male, so we click again on the square. 
parents can be assigned to each of these figures by placing the cursor above the existing figure, depress the left click button, while holding down the left click button, slide the cursor downward toward the existing figure. Just as the cursor reaches the upper edge of the figure, a new partnership line and two new figures are automatically generated, representing the figure's parents. Let's give the female figure here parents as well. To create a child, the cursor is placed in the blank area of the workspace below of the horizontal portion of the partnership line. Depress and hold down the left click button. While holding down the left click button, slide the cursor upward toward the horizontal portion of the partnership line. The gender of the child can be determined by the direction the cursor is slid prior to release of the left click button. Slightly to the right shows female. Slightly to the left, male. Let's slide to the right and create a female child. Release the left click button. Let's go ahead and create two siblings for this child, a sister and a brother. We can show that the two siblings are twins by clicking the vertical line between the left hand figure and the horizontal portion of the partnership line. A new property pad appears. We then click the property pad button indicating twins and the two lines intersect to display twins. To show an interactional pattern between two figures, select the interactional pattern button in the tool pad. Place the cursor in a blank area of the workspace in the proximity of one of the two figures involved in the relationship to be described. Depress and hold the left click button down while sliding the cursor into the first figure and forward toward the second figure. When in the second figure, a line will preview between the two figures. Release the left click button. The interactional pattern line will now be highlighted and a different set of buttons will appear in the property pad to the left of the screen. Let's select the jagged line indicating a hostile relationship. We can also select additional characteristics to be added to the same line. Let's add the symbol for a cutoff relationship. We can click in the gray space to the left of the white workspace to deselect all items. Content can be added to a text block for a selected figure by clicking on the edit text icon at the bottom left of your screen. Data entry fields appear at the bottom of the screen. Text can be entered in as many of these fields as desired. Only those fields into which text has been entered will appear in the genogram. Let's add a name and a birth date for the index person. To obscure these data entry fields and restore your workspace to maximum area, click again on the square icon at the bottom left of the screen. In addition to entering text in text blocks, which are associated with a figure, text can be entered at any location on the genogram workspace using labels. Labels are often used to add headings, legends, or additional descriptive information related to an element. To add a heading to the genogram, select the label icon from the tool pad. Place the cursor in the workspace at the location where you would like the label to appear and left click. Note that a data entry field appears at the bottom of the screen. To create a heading for the genogram in a large banner size with bold font, first click on the text menu, select size, and then banner. Then click on the text. Select Style, 
and then bowl.